Simon, when we look at the 11th and 12th centuries, which we'll be discussing with you this evening, what for you is the year or the event that best sums up the nature of the relationship between Britain and Europe during that period? I think, interestingly, 1140, 1174, um, four years after the assassination of Thomas a Becket, um, whose clash with Henry II so vividly characterised the, uh, the confrontation between the secular, the temporal, and the religious, and partly, I think, the particular of England and the universal of Christendom in, in, in Western Europe. Uh, and I say 1174 because that, that is when, of course, Henry II bowed to the inevitable uh, and saw the, the however powerful he was as the King of England and, of course, as de facto head of the Angevine Empire as such. It's, a, it's an acronym to call it that. Ha, bowed to the inevitable and had to do penance uh, at, the, um, at the, the, the shrine to the martyr Thomas of Beckham. And I think that... Is, an, is a useful time to uh, draw the decisions about the things that tied England into, into Europe, be it social class, be it feudalism, be it Christianity, of course, the church, the language, uh, and yet did make Britain, England really, let's, let's be honest about this, England quite separate in some ways. And I think in, in, in many ways the king who was king of England could no longer quite hold out as King of England, whatever he was about Poitou and Anjou and uh, Aquitaine, etc., uh, and had to go. So I think it was quite a decisive, uh, decisive point. I don't think it's the only one, of course. You know, it it was a bit like uh, Charlemagne going to uh, the Pope to get legitimised his uh, his his position as Emperor of uh, the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, but I think it did it, it very usefully captures some degree of nascent nationalism, some degree of nascent identity, and yet some degree of universalism. And I think that, that is quite an, an interesting uh, m m m melange that, that, that exists in the 11th and 12th century. I think it changes uh, after that. And when we look at the Kingdom of England and all the British Isles as a whole, from the other end of the telescope, mm. as it were, from the continent of Europe, and when we think about the opinion leaders uh, and those who held power during this period. How did they conceive of the offshore kingdom and the British Isles? Did they, for example, think of it as being European or not? I mean, I, I, it's, it's always, you know, one has to avoid anachronism. One also has to avoid sort of the Whig, the Whig interpretation of history that always has England as very separate. But there were things, I think, that did, did separate England and I think England had defined itself over um, three or four hundred years in opposition to Scotland, Wales, Cornwall as an identity. Yeah? Again, acknowledging the the, the, the the regionalism, the sense of identity, the etc. etc. But the I think the English Channel undoubtedly uh, made it that much more difficult to communicate, to uh, just do a, a natural natural trade and and travel. Um, I do think the existence of an English church um, grew up with an identity that was not, that accepted the universalism of, of Rome, but was, was different. Um, I think from, uh, from Alfred the Great's victory over the Vikings onwards, uh, there was a, so I, I do think it was, it was deemed through, as I say, feudalism, through Christianity, through Latin as the clerical language, through feudalism, etc., uh, as, as very much part of a construct that would be recognisable. But I do suspect it was looked on as a slightly different beast than the Holy Roman Empire, for instance, uh, or the Norman Kingdom of Sicily. Um, but equally, I think all of them would be viewed as a bit alien, but equally quite a lot in common. Mm -hmm. So I think there are major themes within it, but I suspect given its geographical distance and the sheer reality of the channel, um, England would, and I say England, different from the British Isles, would have been different. But, you know, it's an interesting that Matilda, daughter of Henry I, is deemed to be a good enough um, uh, a, a, a spouse for the Holy Roman Emperor. 
So, so clearly they're not looked on as a backwater if you're prepared to, to use your, your one shot with a, <laughs> with yeah. a barrage.